Today is day 351 of data science and it is also July 4th, 2022 and it is Monday. And today I'm going to basically install Anaconda because it's time I get into that in the data science field. You know, it has RStudio VS Code and Jupyter Notebook, which I should start using at this point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and download that for Windows. Um, sign up for blah, blah, blah. No, thank you. Not really. Um, and just wait for that to open up. And I believe that, um, I think I'm going to start using also Conda to, instead of like pip install and instead of uh, virtual env to install my packages because Conda actually, um, has the functionality of virtual env wrapper, which is kind of like knowing where all your envs are and etc. So I think I'm going to start doing that instead. Um, so I guess I'll have to do another section with that. So next, I agree, just me. Next, um, okay, install. So we'll wait for that. All right, so now that it's finished installing, I'll click on next and then next and then finish. Um, so I'll close these things out. And then I believe if I go here and I search up Anaconda, I do command something and I can't I can't I can't even speak in a kind of prompt. Um this is kind of the prompt for an Anaconda. So I guess I could do um let me see if I also let's see if I do spider. It would pull up spider, right? And then I believe if I do um Oops, so it pulls up spider, which is great. Um, and then I think if I do, um, I don't know if I have to use like underscore, because I don't know if I use for Jupyter Notebook. How about our studio? I don't even know. Um, I could just search it up here. Can I find a navigator and launch it through there? Oops. All right, so it, again, it comes with um, our studio spider, which I actually don't even see here. So how did it? Oh, yeah, it's over here. There's a new version of that kind of blah, blah, blah. Yes. And I guess we're going to update that. All right, so I'm going to launch Navigator, and it should be the recent version now. All right, so I think this is my command prompt, but then I have an anaconda prompt, so I'm putting that to taskbar. So apparently command prompt and anaconda prompt are the same thing, except that anaconda helps us um, use anaconda without installing some certain thing. I don't even know what I said, I don't remember. But, interesting. I feel as if, I'm not sure, because there's VS Code here, does that mean that I have two versions of VS Code now? Um, I don't even know where to look. Anyway, whatever. Um, interesting. I'm just kind of like exploring this stuff now. So for Jupyter Notebook, right? I just kind of want to see um, how to launch it. So if I go here, do I just write Notebook? Because that's the name of... No. Jupyter Notebook. 
Ah, uh, there we go. We could do um Google Chrome. Nice. That is beautiful. I could click on the Python three. I can go to um let's say uh oh Anaconda three. Nope. Maybe um maybe yeah, Anaconda and I could do folder. Where's the folder? I don't even name it. Oh this one? I'm so confused. I'm not I have no idea what to do right now. So new folder and rename it to projects. Where did it go? Projects. And then over here I can do a new Python 3 notebook. Beautiful. And that's how I open it up. Um and does it come? with pandas installed already let's see hmm, it does nice so that's really good actually so how about all right, so let's do for the notebook. Um, let's see, how do I create virtual environments here? Because what if I don't have, what if Jupyter Notebook doesn't have a certain, I don't know, maybe library? Then I could just do it in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, how about, I believe to create a virtual environment here, I have to, Remove. What if I close it and I just copy this again? And then I do create. Or not create, but um, conda create. And then we'll do create in one space or two spaces. Name, and then I'll call it um like environment data sci or data science, and then Python equals to Python three point nine point six, I believe is the latest version. Let's see if that works. Really? All right. So maybe conda create name data size python 3.9 what do you mean maybe there shouldn't be spaces kind of create name data size python equals 3.9.6 there we go all right So if I click on yes, or why I guess for yes. And then I can go and do conda activate um data side. And now I'm not in I'm now I'm inside that virtual environment. Okay, that's pretty cool. Because um now I've done it with pip install, I've done it with virtual env, now I know how to do it with conda. I wonder if I can do it with a normal command prompt. I don't know, can I? Um, uh, if I do conda create, um, name, not name, but like, data size, I oh, know it is name, isn't it? Yeah, name of the virtual environment, like data size, um, or I could just do Sam or delete just delete in python no space 3.9.6 because conda is not recognized so i don't think i can pip install conda can i is it anaconda do i do 
can I run Anaconda on my command terminal? Can I run Anaconda on command prompt? I think I never saw this. Hmm. Interesting, so I guess that I could only do this with this here. And I can't do it on over here. Okay, so I guess I well. Well, yeah, that makes sense to have its own prompt, but then I wonder why I can't just do it in the normal terminal. Because over here I could definitely do pip install. I could do, um, um, well, I don't think I have, I do have a virtual environment here. Hold on. Um, let's see, virtual, no, can I, don't I have, like, flask app in the... There we go. So work on Flask app in V. And now I'm in that virtual environment. But I believe that one was from a virtual wrapper. And I don't think I've done one for pip install. But that's for web development. So I guess for Anaconda, I guess I'll have to do all the virtual environments here separately for Anaconda. So I just created a data science one. And I think I did do a data science one here. Or maybe it was on my old laptop. I don't remember. But, um, oh, um, so deactivate, I got, you know, did I spell it wrong? All right, so that's good. So I guess, um, but when it comes to Jupyter Notebook, do I have to tell it to use a certain, um, uh, interpreter here? Or not interpreter, but an environment. What if I put it in a certain folder? I could do um. What if I do? Is it Honda make directory? Is that a thing? How do I make a directory here? I do con to make directory. What if I just do normal make directory? Make directory K and then change directory to K and now I'm in directory K. Right, and if I go to my files and I go to my C drive and I go to users and me and then it should be here. See directory K, but I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'll oh, have to close this out before I do that. Try again. Right, and so it's going to get deleted. And now, if I go back over here and I say um, change directory, so cd to k, it's going to give me an error because there is no k anymore because I deleted it. Um, but let me see. Um, there's some Honda. Um, there's some Honda uh, commands that I haven't done, so I could do Honda env list. Just like I could do pip list, right? So it tells me all the virtual environments that I have. So I have the base one, which I guess is the equivalent to the global one in um, the command prompt. And then I have data side, which is really cool. So actually, let me do a side by side comparison. So over here, I can just do pip list, and it'll give me a list of all of the, um, well, at th well, at this point, it's going to give me the list of all the um, packages. This is not what I wanted. I wanted work on for virtual environments, this one, so pip doesn't tell you the virtual environments you have, but virtual env does. So if you do work on it, it tells you all of the environments that you have, plus if I have env, that's in this case. And then if I use anaconda and I do conda env list, it tells me all of the environments that I have here, which pip does not do that. This is actually um, something else for the packages. Pip list tells you the packages you have installed in that environment. Um, in this case, is the global environment. If I go here and I go to Flask app, well, actually, hold on. Um, I don't think I have any environments that are not Flask app ENV. I need a virtual environment, virtual wrapper environment, so I don't think I can use the pip 
um, stuff from there. Let's see, Flask Appian Review. Um, what? You can't even stop. Of course. All right, and then what was I gonna do again? Oh, I don't think this would work here. Or would I? You're interesting. It does. Pip list. Let me just look at my notes from the other day. Where's my stuff? Um, where was it? Yeah, here. The ritual wrapper to see packages installed. I could still use the same thing. Oh, I'm so dumb. Virtual wrapper again is a wrap is a wrapper for, um, for Pip. So it does involve a lot of things from Pip, except that activation is different and um, it has a work on right. So you can even view all the virtual environments, which Pip does not have an option to to do that. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah, um, I think that's like a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, what was I going to do again? I forgot. So I have a Flask app EMV, which is one virtual environment that I'm using for VS Code. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, deactivate that. Now I'm out of that. And then if I, what happens if I do conda deactivate? Interesting. Interesting. Oh my god, wait, so So then what the How do I go back? Wait, so it's its own environment? Interesting. What does the star mean? Interesting. So it's like creating its own environment. What does the asterisk mean next to base um, in Conda? The active environment. Okay. So I'm assuming that the base is equivalent to the global in um to the global environment with PIP and virtual ENV. Um, but for Anaconda, it has a base environment instead of a global environment. And then you can write your own specific environments and data side and et cetera. That makes so much sense. All right. So if I want to activate this, though, um, I would have to do activate base. And now I'm back in base which is different from over here, what if I wanted to just activate in it, um, activate like Flask App ENV, I would just have to do work on, hold on, would I have to do Flask? Yeah, work on Flask App ENV, and if this were to be, this is right now as a virtual ENV, but if it were to be PIP, then I would have had to do, um, I think it has to do with, um, Flask app env and then I would have to do scripts and then it whoops I didn't finish Flask app env and then I would have had to do scripts why does it keep doing that Flask app env scripts and then I would have had to done activate and then clicked entered or I could have just done um activate wait no because Interesting. Hold on. I know that just to deactivate, I could have done. Oh, yeah, no, to activate, I had to do that script stuff for PIP, but I could have just deactivated by writing the word deactivated. Why can't I spell? Okay, that's not. That's whatever. 
Um, let me see my notes. Why did you open? Because I clicked on your notes. Where are my notes? Where are my notes? All right. So for PIP to activate, see, I had to use that. Um, the, the name of the virtual environment scripts activate. And then to deactivate, I could have just done deactivate. Um, whereas in virtual wrapper, it activates automatically. But if you ever get out of it, all you have to do is work on um, virtual environment name. Let me add that there. Um, and then deactivate is uh, the same thing. And then everything else is the same except that this is an option that we did not have in PIP. And this is also an option that we did not have in PIP because uh, this is without deactivating and activating here. We could have just done work on blah, blah, blah which is pretty cool. And then I believe um, I should do the same thing with Kaga, should I not? All right. Um, all right, so just kind of wanted to explore that real quick. And now, oops, let me get out of here. You have to make that. And then um, currently I'm in the base. So I don't really want to install anything in the base, but I could do, um. How do I see, so I could do condo list, and it would give me all the packages installed. Oh my God. Wow, that's beautiful. So it comes with a lot of packages. That's amazing. So let me see if pandas is here. It's in alphabetical order, right? Let me see. Well, I do see NumPy. Oh, look at that. Pandas is right here. NumPy is right here. Beautiful. So that's why if I go to Jupyter Notebook, um, I believe it runs with my base, does it? There are no terminals running. Shut down files, folders. Um, how do I go to all the books or all files? Reload, please. Is it broken? It's fine. Um, that's why. I can import pandas and I don't have to like install it because it's already installed here. But I'm wondering if it's automatically, um, which, how do I know which environment it's in? Is it due to the folder that it's in? Like, I don't even know. Is this what it is? Let me see. How do I know? what environment I'm using in Jupyter, that's not how you spell it, are you serious? In Jupyter Notebook. Open the notebook in Jupyter Notebooks and look in the upper right corner of the screen. It should say, for example, Python ENV if the language is Python, and it's using an environment called ENV. Ah, see, so I was, yes, that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, is this it? But apparently it's using Python 3 IP Y kernel. So what if, no, I don't want to log out. What if I'm going to go to new notebook, but then why can't I? Interesting. Let me leave here. Um, If I go here, all right, so if I go here and run Jupyter notebook, and it should bring me up here. Right, so at this point, I go to ENVs, but this is different. Hold on. I have a sample ENV, but did I do that here? I, don't, I can't even tell anymore. Sample ENV, I did that over here, right? Let me see. I can go back and see. Hello? Hello. This thing's frozen. I doubt it. All right, I need to scroll up. I already have it up here. So I have a data. Oh, I have a space and I have a data science. Um, and then over here, let me see. Work on tells me. I only have class at the NV. So where does the sample come from? Because I know I did that today, did I not? I don't remember. Projects I did over here. So I guess I could do 
Where did I do sample EMV from? I don't think I did. I did the root, didn't I? I don't remember anything, honestly. Oh, it says three days ago, obviously. See, I was like, okay. I was like, am I going crazy? Um, let's see. So I guess if I go over here, let me just take a screenshot of this real quick. All right, um, I'm going to close the annex, this one over here, move this over here, and just open one up right here. Okay, so I'm at the base right now. So at this point, um, I want to switch. So I want to do cloud at the activate. And then I want to switch on Honda data side activate. Did I do it wrong? Honda activate data side. There we go. So at this point, you know what I should have done? I should have done that. Maybe I can just do it manually. If I go here in my C drive and I go to user, so I love it, and then I find. Wait, I can see real quick. I can do conda in the list. And it'll show me these, but they're inside EMVs. But they're inside on a conda three. Oh. Okay, so they're inside this folder and a conda three. And inside that folder, why does it always do this to me? So let me go back here. Anaconda. Navigator. The bones? That's not it. Hmm. It's literally not it. Where is that? It's inside Smart Anaconda. Oh, it's right here, Anaconda 3. So over here is all the stuff over here that tells me, like, I have the packages and I have the EMVs and here is my data science EMV and so I guess in data science EMV I can create a new Jupyter notebook inside there um let me just google it so how to create a Jupyter notebook in virtual environment why is it the opposite i don't want to oh well i didn't met okay i don't create a jupyter notebook i meant how do i open one in a virtual environment or do that doesn't make sense because in VS Code, I don't open a file in a virtual environment. I open a file and then I make sure that the virtual environment is the one that I'm using. But wait, okay, once we create a virtual environment, we can move it with the pointer so we don't have to manually activate the VAE in the shine. We need to pip install another Python module. Cool turtle. All right, so let's have a look at how to create a virtual environment. Package management. After this, we can create a condo virtual environment like that. I did that. I did that. I did that too. So I have to pip install the Python the kernel inside that virtual environment. All right, so we'll do that. So we'll do pip install, and then how do I install it? User, do I have to put my username, or is it just user? IP my kernel. And I install it within that virtual environment, which is data science. 
next you're going to return to Jupiter by typing I found okay but is there a way to do it from the Jupiter notebook okay so let me click enter there so I could start could not find a version that satisfies the requirement blah 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 no matching distribution pip install user can I spell it wrong? I must have spelled it wrong. All right, so here it is downloading. All right, and so at this point, um, you add your virtual environment to Jupyter by typing Python module. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Install the virtual environment. Okay. Now you are able to choose a conda environment as a kernel in Jupyter. Here's what it looks like. Wait, what do you mean as a kernel? A software is usually edible. Are you kidding me? The kernel is a computer program at the core of a computer operating system and generally has a complete control over everything in the system. It is a portion of the operating system that is always resident in memory and so we have to Sure. Um, so I have to write this over here. So let me just put that to the side and just kind of manually write it. So it's Python, M for module, IPy, kernel, uh, I was writing it with an A, I think. Install user name equal to data sign. Beautiful. All right, that's beautiful. And then it tells me the location of it. That's amazing. And now if I go ahead and let's say I open a Jupyter notebook here. Really? Jupyter Notebook. Oh, Conda. I don't think I have to do Conda Jupyter Notebook. I think I just have to be outside of here. Hold on, deactivate. And then just open a Jupyter. No, I have to be in base, do I not? Um, Conda, activate base, Jupyter, Notebook. So I'm assuming. Oh, so I'm assuming that Jupyter Notebook is actually installed inside the base, which makes sense. So at this point, how do I get to um Anaconda three and the ENVs in Data Science, and then in Data Science, I can create a new oh it doesn't even matter where i am i could literally be here in whatever folder and i just could create a new um data science notebook oh that's beautiful that is so so beautiful i think i'm gonna cry and it tells me perfect now it tells me the virtual environment that i'm in over here and so whatever packages i install over here would work let me try something if i import pandas as pd would it work? No, that's perfect. <laughs> Why do I say that's perfect? Because it tells me, right, that I'm in a new environment. If I go here and I activate, hold on, let me close this. I don't know why it keeps freezing. So if I go here and I deactivate, I will do conda deactivate base, and then I'll do, um, what do you mean? Huh? Oh, okay. So, and then I'll do um, conda um, activate data side, and then I look at the packages that it has. So, I'll do conda list. It literally tells me all the packages that it has. But notice, I'm trying to look for pandas here. Pandas is in there. 
So my question is, if data side has all of these packages in this environment, then why doesn't it work with Jupyter Notebook if that is the environment that I'm using? Because I had thought, why does it keep doing that? No module named pandas. Interesting. But then how do I, do I pip install it from here? I don't even think I can do that. So, so I guess, is there a difference? Okay, maybe in the base environment, well, not a base environment with Python. What if I had done the base kernel? Because I wasn't in base, actually. I was just in a random Python blah, blah, blah kernel. So I guess I have to really install. So how to install packages in Jupyter Notebook. Hmm. So conda install. Yes. What? Prefix numpy. Honestly, it sounds much more pretty. Why can't I do it? Weird. So I guess I'll have to do this. Alright, so I'm going to use conda, so I just kind of want to put this here to this. Where's my notebook? Okay, over here. Move this here, move this here. So apparently, I have to do conda install. Yes. Not too greedy. Um, prefix. Then system prefix. Pandas. Import pandas as pd. And then let me do pd dot data frame column one, two, three. And we run this and that. Did it not be right? What do you mean it's not connected? Interesting. Why does it keep doing that? Maybe I'll have to do file, file, and then. I don't even know, go back to Jupiter. Or not. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Oops. Alright, so let me just close this out and open it back up again. And then I want to get out of here. And then, um, what did I want to do again? Oh, Jupiter notebook. So I can have really really I'm so confused. Hello. Oh, do I have to be on base? I guess we'll do conda activate base. Jupyter Notebook, we got that bit, C user smart is actually local, I mean global, not local, what am I saying? Alright, so new again, data side, now if I put this in here and run it, not a conda environment, what do you mean not a conda environment? I am pretty sure I am in a conda environment, like what do you mean? Did I not make it in conda? I'm so confused. Okay, so is it a pip environment? Like, make up your mind. Why 
this? Is it she? Like, okay, girl is confused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's what I was thinking. Um, I guess that that's how it works. So even though, um, even though, okay, so let me show you, actually. So even though, oh, is that why it's working? Because I have this off, so as long as this is off, it's not going to work anymore. Great. So let me go ahead and, I guess they want me to use conda deactivate. And then let me, um, do conda activate and my virtual environment data science. And then what I'll do is I'll do conda list and it'll give me the uh, list of all the packages that it has. Um, oh no, 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 what did it do? No, 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 this is the wrong one. I'm not. Conda activate data sign. What do you mean error? Girl, I'm so confused. What do you mean? It's literally there. Like, what? Is that not what my environment looks like? Like, okay, what if I do conda? What if I do conda? Activate base. So the base is activated. So if I do conda list. Oh, no, 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 that's the wrong one. I meant conda and v list. Conda and v list. It should give me the environments that I have. But it's not. So what's going on? I'm so confused. Conda and v list. Oh, wait, that's amazing. That's amazing. Now this thing is just making the jokes at me. <laughs> Let me think. What if I do... Um, What if I close it? Wow. Alright, um, if I go here and I do Conda in the list, why is it giving me? What is going on? What do you mean? It's literally here. Conda. It's literally, it's literally right there. It literally has a folder somewhere here. Conda 3. And it has the ENV and it has data science right there. So what the is it ENVS? Have I been doing ENVS? No, right? Conda ENV list. So what's not working with that? What if I do try ENVS list? Did just have to restart my computer because at this point, yes, I did mean conda. Yes. <sighs> conda ENV list. This is ridiculous. What if I make another one? What if I do um what if I do conda create but do I have to do it here? Conda create name I'm gonna do data side two and I'll do Python three point nine point not a two point nine can you imagine I 
Okay, so I have decided my computer is absolutely going crazy, and because all of this worked literally five minutes ago, so you know what, maybe my computer needs a break, and maybe it's telling me that I need a break, because I don't know what's going on right now, like, this thing is just waking things up, because what the heck. But at least I got to play around, um, that was the point of today, you know, to just kind of explore, um, Anaconda, and it's, it's hard to, like, you know, do its stuff. I think tomorrow I'm gonna go through um my little what do you call it? Um my little note section. So you know I did it with just Python with pip. Um so I probably should specify with pip. Oops. And then I did it with virtual wrapper and so I'm, I'm gonna do one with conda now. So I'll do that tomorrow. Um this was day 344 by the way. Not today though. Today's day 350. So um yeah so i think we're good i just wanted to kind of explore everything um what if i just wanted to make sure one more thing let me close this out let me open the anaconda if i do jupiter notebook that's the thing it's not working oh now it is work right and i click on new i still have a data slide it's not even working i can do a terminal whoa that's really cool that's actually really nice that's beautiful actually um interesting i just but if i do data sci i see that and importing pandas does not work because it's not here but if i Maybe that worked. Interesting. It says requirement already satisfied, but it told me not to do this. Like, article told me not to do it like that. So, it also said not recognize. Am I going crazy? Like, am I going? That's a general question. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Interesting. Um. Okay then. So my question. Um, I don't even know what my question is. Um, oh, okay, let me try one more thing. So, new notebook, Python 3. Here, import pandas as pd does work because it just does. See, it works. What's the difference between Python 3, IP? But didn't I create a kernel? But then I, I don't even know. What's the difference between this and data side? Because both, well, obviously data side does have, I just tried showing it here, but it didn't let me. Data side does have, um, what do you call it? Um, let me activate it. It does, data science does have um, pandas installed and it has, multiple libraries and salts but apparently i can't use them um in jupyter notebook so i'm assuming you have to install them in jupyter notebook besides it being installed in your virtual environment so what the heck is going on yes
There's literally not allowed to do anything. Maybe, maybe I'm just going crazy, honestly. I notice a pattern. Every time I, clo I close the Anaconda command prompt in which I open the notebook, it literally doesn't connect to the kernel, which is interesting. So I guess I'm gonna have to have that open the entire time for it to actually work. But it's weird. Change the kernels too. Data side, and then as I run it, I'm so confused. It shouldn't be working, should it? It doesn't even work. Right. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm just exploring today. Um, I did want to explore some other few other things. So if I go here. And I go and I do conda activate base. So apparently the base works, but everything else doesn't. Um, I just want to, I did Jupyter Notebook. I think I tried Spider, the first thing I did. This is so amazing, I'm in love. <clears throat> so this is beautiful. And it's a Python file. Is there any way here you can get help of any objects? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. But unused. How is that a problem? All right. Um, PG dot data frame column. One, two, three. And if I run it, how do I run it? Debug, run, print line. Is it gonna run or like what? Oh. Execute, execute, what does this mean? Current console. Is this thing serious right now? Hello? Run. It's literally, I don't know how to use any of this. <gasps> um, how do I, hello? It's literally not running though, so the run was confused. Ooh, it has plot. Do I have to have a Python interpreter? Oh, it's using the base. Um, that's why pandas works. <laughs> but how do I um do I have to print it? No way. <gasps> no way, that's so old school. I have to actually use print. I'm so sorry. That's like what's wrong with me? That's not old school. I mean I just I'm not used to using print for pandas. I think there's a display option also. Um, but yeah, okay, it works. That's great. Not me not using the most simplest thing ever. Um, I'm gonna set this actually equal to a data variable. At least I could do this. Data, and then I'll do, I think PD, it has a display option. I'm not sure, hold on, PD dot. Is there not a display option? display and then I can display the data. I've used display before but I don't know if I'm using it the right way. Is it capital? No. Hold on. Display pandas. See I knew it. So I guess it's just a function. I don't think it's um it's a pandas thing, is it? I don't think so. Maybe it's just a normal Python function. It displays the actual data, so there we go, that works. Alright, so that's my little introduction to Spider. Now I kinda wanna um kinda tinker with R Studio. I don't know how to write it though. Is it R Studio? Like that? 
Visit Bar Studio. How do you open it? R? Like what? Um, how to open R Studio in um, Anaconda. Are you serious? Anaconda. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Prompt. Interesting. Doesn't matter because it's open here. So let me. Oh, I'm so down. It's because I didn't have it installed. Is that why? Oh, look, I can see my environments in Anaconda Navigator. That's really beautiful. And they have done that. I haven't done this one yet. Um, do I have used PyCharm before? I wonder what IBM is. Tools to analyze and visualize data. It's going to take us all. Anyway, um, maybe it's not that important to use our studio today. If it finishes by the time I stop talking, then maybe, but no. Um, all right. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Let me just exit out of here. And um, I guess if this thing doesn't install by the time I'm done putting in all my citations here, then. Oh, this is web development. I'm so confused. What am I doing today? Oh, I'm in data science. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Um, because usually I'm doing this in you know data science, like creating virtual environments and stuff. So I'm used to. Wait, today was day three fifty one. Did I say that? I don't even know anymore. Fourth Monday, and then I'm just gonna put basically all of my sources that I used today. Um, so this one answers this question. I could just do the following here. I paste a link in there. Paste that there. This one was a really good one. Using virtual environments in Jupyter Notebook and Python. Um, Where's my stats? All right, let me put that one in here. Get that link, close it out. Paste it in there. All right, then we have installing Python packages. And then put the link. Paste that in here. And then I have this one. Oh, this is just something I Googled. Um, not really useful. This one obviously is the Anaconda. And I think based on there. Um, and that's it for today. And our studio is still loading, and I'm not gonna wait. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that over here and 
Should I just do all? Should I? Should I? I mean, just to have something to show for today. Let me go and do an SQL script real quick. <sighs> Alright, so I just have to think, like, what SQL script do I want to do? I did a book one. I did a food pantry. I did a student one. How about, ooh, a graduation one. Wait, is there a data type? Hold on. SQL. Does SQL have a Boolean data type? Interesting. I'll see. So maybe I'll do like a graduation database of like students who returned their Chromebooks or not. And if um I'll do a okay, so let me think. So I'll do a database in which I have like let's say um the class of twenty two is just a class of ten students and I need to know if they returned their Chromebooks, um, if they returned their chargers, if they returned their uniforms. And then based on that, I'll see if they're gonna graduate. So I'm gonna do create table and I'll call it um students. And then I'll do um the column name, so ID, integer data type, primary key, so it's not just underneath the um column. And then it's instead it's an identifier and it will automatically do it for me. And then I'll do name. This is a text data type. Um I'll do um let's see charger returned, or I'll say like charger there they return a charger there they return their um Chromebook, or did they return their uniform if they're in sport or whatever, let's pretend they all are. Oops. Oh, and here I'm going to do Boolean. Let's see if that's a thing. Boolean charger, Boolean. Really? They don't let me do it? So it's not a data type? Please use one of the valid columns type when creating a table. Column text field, no commands. Okay, I guess we could do text and then I could still work from that. And that still works. So insert into table, so students, and then the following columns. I'm just going to copy this over here, paste the columns, and just delete the data type and the column type. And then I'll do values, and then I'll do um, the actual value. So the first one can have a name of um Coralina is that all <laughs> like Carolina Coralina um well, let's just do Cora <gasps> Coral Coral is such a nice name okay Coral let's say she did return her um charger um she returned her Chromebook and she returned her uniform all right so now to see that I could do select everything from students and then you'll see um the database or at least the first row of the database because it's the only one we have now to do a few more so i said 10 right so let's do um one two three four five six seven eight nine that should be 10 and let me just change their name so this one can be like um i don't know like jake um, then I can have like, um, Mayor, Grayson, Sky. Um, let me think. Um, Charlie.
of Fernando. Why is it so hard to come up with names? Um, Mickey. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, Laura, Laura, Laura. And then, um, Orlando. Oh my god, I knew an Orlando once in third grade. That just came up. Oh my god, I completely forgot about him. Okay, um, it was in third grade, it was second grade. I was in Washington. That's crazy. All right, so here's my database. And now let me just change uh, whether they did stuff or not. So we'll do like no here, maybe they did no here, no here, no here, and maybe this person forgot their chargers and, oops. And this person with their stuff here. This one too. I think that's good right here. All right, so here's my final database. So I have the name of all my students in the class of 2022 who are graduating. Or who, well, basically, I'm trying to figure out who is actually going to graduate, or at least they're all going to graduate, but whether they receive their diploma depends on if they returned their charger, their Chromebooks, and their uniform. So I'll do, let's see. So I want to see who returned um, everything. So I'll do select everything from students, and then where charger is equal to yes and Chromebook is also equal oops to yes and uniform is also equal to yes and so I can see um, all of their um, uh, all of their information, but let's say I only want the names of the students who are going to graduate to make it very easier so or easy to read. So I'll do select instead of everything. I'll do select name from students where the who who returned the charger is yes and Chromebook is yes and uniform is yes, meaning they returned their Chromebook uniform and charger and so then these are the names of the students who are going to be able to receive their diploma after they graduate because they did return everything so coral grayson charlie fernando nikki and orlando now let's say i want the name of the students who did not return um either their charger their chromebook or their uniform so all really i'll have to, all i really have to do is change this to or change this to or and then change this to um no no and no so now i selected the names from my student database where students or where at least where charger is no where, or chromebook is no or uniform is no so they only need to not return one thing in order not to graduate so it doesn't matter if they returned their chromebook and they returned their uniform but if they don't return their charger they're still not getting their diploma did i say graduate earlier sorry i meant not getting the diploma they're graduating they're just not getting their diploma so jake mayor sky and laura are not getting their diploma because they did not um because they did not return one of these at least one of these things we can say from this but let's say we want to specifically know um what they didn't return so we can just remove this right name select everything and then we can see individually okay jake did not return the charger and he did not return the chromebook but he did return the uniform so basically jake just needs to return the charger and the chromebook um let's say i want to know like um a gym like a uh, like a football coach comes up to me or whatever coach from a sport and he's asking me not a football coach let's say the athletic director comes up to me and he's like I want to know the students who still have not returned uniforms I want their names and so I'm like okay so from here I'll select um, the names from students where the 
uniform is equal to no. So in this case, only Sky um, has a returned her um, uniform in the class of 2022. So I'll give um, Sky's name to the athletic director for his purposes, I guess, to make sure that she hands in her uniform. Um, and let's say um, the teachers at the media center um, or the assistants at the media center want to know who did not return their Chromebooks and their chargers because they need to collect that data and they need those Chromebooks and chargers back. And so I'll be like, okay, so I'll get, they want those names. And so I'll be like, okay, select name from students from my student database where Chromebook is equal to no. And, or at least, or charger is equal to no, because it's either or, it doesn't matter. They want to know who hasn't returned a Chromebook or a charger. Um, so Jake, Mayor, Sky, and Laura have at least, um, have not at least, remember how does that make sense? Have not returned at least the Chromebook, wait, does that make sense? Have not returned either the Chromebook, the charger, or both. Um, and so I'll give these names to the assistants or the teachers at the media center so that they can do what they want with those names. Um, and let's see, what else can we come up with? Um, let's see, um, maybe um, the school changes their mind and they are letting students who did not return their uniforms graduate. So I want to know the names of students who did not return their uniform but did, but did return everything else. So I'll do select name from my student database where, I believe this part, where uniform is equal to no, um, but they have to have Chromebook, but they have had to have returned their Chromebook um, and um, they would have had to have returned their charger. So no students actually. So no students get to graduate, even if we decide them, even if we decide that they can grad not graduate. Why do I keep saying that? So no students actually get to have their diploma, um, even with the decision um, that they can keep, they could actually get their diploma besides the fact that they did not return their uniform. Um, but actually, let me select everything from students. All right, Sky, though, yeah, so if Sky were to have returned her charger, she would have been able to grab um to have a diploma um because we decided, you know, that she could um have get her diploma despite the fact that she did not return her uniform because maybe the athletic director was being nice and said you know what it's fine they can keep the uniforms this year let's actually um change this to yes so we could actually see so again we can select um the names right of the students um from this database where uniform maybe it would have been easier to understand if i just did returned or not returned instead of yes and no um, where uniform is equal to yes, I mean no. <laughs> so that means they did not return their uniform. And, um, the charger is equal to yes, meaning they returned their charger and they returned their Chromebook. And so you can see that Sky is now going to be able to receive her diploma after graduation because despite the fact of her not returning the uniform, we decided that students could keep their uniforms this year. So as long as she returned the charger and the Chromebook, she can get her diploma. And so basically that's it. Um so let me just yeah, just let me leave that there. And I'm just gonna also select everything from students so we can have that there. Um and yeah that's pretty much all there is to it. Um and yeah just wanted to do that today because I wanted something to show for today. What am I going to call this? What day is it again? Day 351. Um, day 351. And it is um, graduating. Well, well, this student received 
fair diploma. If that's not how you spell received, I'm done. Okay, good. All right, so day 351, most students receive their diploma. Um, and are you joking me right now? Day 351, will this student receive their diploma? And um, why does it keep doing Patience, 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 patience. Okay. Day 351. Will. What? Will this student receive their diploma? Okay, I'm just going to double click this and. Okay, thank God. Will this student receive their diploma? Okay, save that, save that, and then go here. And then I'm just gonna do a little horizontal line here and just write oh, oops. And we'll just copy this and paste it in there. And just do control minus. And just take a screenshot. Okay, actually not the okay. I even just do this. What the heck? Why is a Microsoft store? This area is just go use thank you screenshot perfect control s and just save it in the delete file and call it for free for video. All right, um, that's it for today. I am going to go now.